this weekend is about thresholds and uh, the gatekeeper is to do with thresholds. And so Peter is going to explain about the gatekeeper to us this morning. So Peter Dawkins. <laughs> Thank you, and good morning, everybody. Good morning. Just, just to check, can you hear me at the back? Yes. <laughs> ha, okay. <laughs> if I drop my voice, just put your hand up so that I can see you, and because um, I can drop my voice a bit. Um, the gatekeeper. Well, why, why is the gatekeeper trust named uh, the gatekeeper trust? You know, why, why do we choose that name? Um, it's a long story. I'm not going to tell you the whole story, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about the gatekeeper and why it feels very important to us and why we're using it as a, a call sign, really. Um, gateway, I mean, the gatekeeper, as you know, is a guardian of a gateway. So every gatekeeper must have a, have a gateway. Uh, well, what? What is a gateway? Just think about that for a moment. What is a gateway? So as you ponder on that, you might have various images come to your mind as you, as you think about it. Um, but ba basically, it's a gateway is a place where you move from one, one place through, through the gateway into another place. It's a movement from one to another. Um, and you go into a place, you can come out of a place, but it's always through a gateway. It can be an entrance, for instance, into a house. It's a gateway into a house. It could be a gateway into a temple or a church. It could be a gateway into any room of a house, from one room to another. As you move through, through the gateway or doorway, you're moving through the gateway. And it can also be a gateway in the landscape. And, you know, we all have um, our favourite landscapes. I don't know anybody who hasn't got a favourite landscape or place, place to go in nature. Well, what makes it special compared with another place? So if you're moving from one place you're not so happy with to go to your happy place, again, you're moving through a gateway. And when you go back to your less happy place, you're moving back again through that gateway. And very often we don't take any notice of these gateways. And every gateway has a guardian, so that means we're not taking notice of the guardian. Now the thing is, you know, if you're approaching a house, going to um, pay a visit to a house, you come to the gateway or doorway, it's quite polite to knock on the door first or ring the bell, isn't it? <laughs> and wait for the door to be opened and the host of the house, the guardian of the house, say, who are you, and um, invite you in, hopefully. And then you're a guest. You become a guest of the house. You can be looked after, um, have your questions answered, be shown around, and really, it's an act of friendship. You make friendship. But the other way of going into a house is that you just walk in, uninvited. Well, then you're not a guest, are you? We, we, we become a burglar. We become somebody who's trespassing and it's not quite the same so if you're a trespasser and you're suddenly found out by the host of the house by the person who owns it um, that person won't be very happy and will do their best to get you out of it well it happens in houses happens also in other buildings in churches in temples if you're not welcome you'll be got out as quickly as possible but if you are made welcome because you've asked to go in then the whole thing is totally different. Well, it's not that different in the landscape. This is very, very important to, uh, thing to understand. Um, if you're just an ordinary tourist, you know, you can watch them. You go gaily off to where you want to go, some beach or mountain or whatever, and, um, you know, do your thing with no sense of actually going into a special place, because it's special to you. That's why you've gone there. There's no sense of going in and pausing at the gateway and saying, please, may I come in? Is it appropriate for me to come in at this time? Good questions to ask, because not only should we ask to go in, but also the question, 
is it appropriate at this time to go in can be quite critical. And we've, we've seen examples of this in, in the life of Gatekeeper Trust where people have rushed in try, wanting to go and do something good um, at, at a deep level, but they haven't asked permission. They got to the top of the mountain or wherever they're going and suddenly shot to pieces, run, run in all directions. You know, something's not right and it's getting rid of them. And this has happened several times. I mean, that's a dramatic incident, but it can happen in other um, more subtle ways as well. Um, it, it's, it's really quite important to always find these gateways, and sometimes they're not easy to see. You have to sense them, be aware of them, and pause there and ask permission to go in. Sometimes you might have to spend a long time at the gateway to get that attunement, and hear the answer clearly, and sometimes it might be quite quick because you've already done lots of preparation already. But always <coughs> notice the gateways, or the main gateways at any rate. It's very, very, very important. Um, and the thing is, what, what I've found and others have found is once you get that attunement, you ask permission to go in and you wait for the answer. You're listening, listening, listening. If you've got somebody physical there, you know, it's easy. They just say, come on in, you can hear them. But if it's more subtle, if it's the guardian of the place that we call the spirit, the spirit of the place, the angel of the place, then it can be more difficult. <coughs> you have to wait. You have to listen to your intuition until you hear the answer. And sometimes it's quite quick. Sometimes the answer can take a long time coming. Well, be patient. That's the other that's the other thing about this, be patient. And what, what is happening? What is happening? You're moving from one place to another. It's a kind of horizontal movement, if you like. In fact, in terms of consciousness, we are moving vertically, or at least symbolically, vertically, moving from one level of consciousness to another, to another, to another. So the act of waiting at the gate, for the gatekeeper, asking permission, is not just get you in, is actually to deepen your consciousness so to become more and more aware of what is really there in the more subtle way. And then you might find the spirit of the place is so happy to see you, you are shown around and you can hear, you can see other things which you wouldn't normally be able to, to see. Um, and I've, done, I've done various tests with this over, over, over the years. Um, with those who don't do that and, and those who do. Um, one prime example I usually share is um, years ago I was looking at a sacred site with some dowsers and they did their thing with their dowsing rods and pendulums and so on, rushing here, then everywhere. And I did my thing, pausing at the gateway and then usually I go to the center. In that instance I was called to go to the very center and do my prayers and meditations. And um, for me, the whole pattern emerged, and I could write it down, and so on. So when we compared notes afterwards, the dowsers, the dowsers were all upset, because they said, oh, this place is so unbalanced. You know, there's um, energy pattern here, it's distorted, or missing this, that, and the other. And I said, well, actually, I've got a pattern that's complete. So what, what had happened there? What had happened is that by making a proper attunement and the prayer, you can open up the whole energy field that otherwise might remain absolutely close to you and, and secret. It's done, auto well, it's, if, if a service in church is done well, it automatically happens in a church service because it's designed to do that. And so like in Westminster Abbey, uh, for instance, a great example, lots of tourists go there. When the tourists are there, the chakras of the, of the cathedral are pretty shut down. You know, it's like walking through a museum on the whole. But as soon as the service begins, or, or the minute silence that they often do at Westminster Abbey, suddenly the chakras open, all the energy is there flowing, and you're in a magical space. And your consciousness go, can go soaring, soaring to the heights, and you can have a very, very, very profound and wonderful experience. Um, but the ordinary tourists, they don't get that, just wandering around, it's just, just a museum, you know. Very nice, attractive, but... 
And that's why, of course, lots of tourists will chatter away, even if they're not meant to. And uh, or, or go around with their mobiles nowadays, don't they? <laughs> Look, looking, looking at something, you know, their, their latest friend on Facebook or something. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very, very odd, odd thing that's done. Um, the other thing about, you know, if you're going, going to a house to see your friend, you're invited in, often... We have a tradition, don't we, of taking a gift with us. A gift, gift is a nice thing. It's not always necessary, but a physical gift is an expression of your friendship and your intentions. And it kind of grounds your, your inner intention. It, it cements it, <laughs> makes it firm. It's like um, the old-fashioned way, if you make a contract with someone, you shake their hand. You give your word and you shake their hand and you cement that word, you will keep your word, uh, because, of course, you've done that. And, of course, the right, right hand, as you all know, is the hand, um, hand of friendship, the hand, hand of giving, giving out that love. You shake your hand, you're giving your love, you're giving your friendship, you're, you're giving your trust um, to somebody else by doing that. Um, so I we use the right hand and not the left. Left hand is for, for a different purpose. Um, the, the, this, these, these are symbols, but they're also actualities in ourselves. We, we live, live these symbols to express life in this sort of way. The other, other thing about the gateway, gateway is you're entering into something. Well, entering into, expressed in Latin, then back to English again, is initiation. It comes from the Latin in Nitio, which means to enter into. So as you enter into a place through the gateway, you are or can be entering in terms of initiation. Now that's a very profound thing. If you're ready for it, at the right time, it's the right time for you to experience initiation, that is what can happen to you. You are entering into what in tradition is called the mystery. The mystery of life. You know, what is life? Who are you? Who am I? Entering into that mystery of who am I? What is life? What is the purpose of being here? What are we meant to do? And there are, uh, well, I suppose, well, I guess we spend lifetime after lifetime after lifetime learning this, uh, learning a little bit more each time, hopefully. But initiation is a very, very deep thing. And it's possible as you enter through a gateway, Wherever it is, into a temple, church, or the landscape, you can enter into a degree of initiation. The next one that's appropriate for you, that that's, the place can give you an experience that will help that. Now, the gatekeeper in charge of this, the gatekeeper is the spirit of the place or spirit of the landscape. That gatekeeper is known in initiation as the hierophant. Hierophant, that means the teacher and the tester. Two things, teaching, testing. We, we have, have in tradition, the Western tradition, various names for that. One of them is the Christ. The Christ is there as the gatekeeper. Gatekeeper between heaven and earth, for instance. Or gatekeeper between right and left. Gatekeeper between what's outside, what's inside. Um, and so on the different ways of defining it. Christ is the gatekeeper. Another one in the more human way, um, more like you and me, uh, was the role given to St. Peter, the disciple of, of Jesus. Um, he was made the gatekeeper and given the keys of the gates, the gold and silver keys of the gates, symbol, old symbols of the Hierophant, who's the gatekeeper. And then if you remember it, if you know your Bible and remember the story, there was a time when Jesus said, to his disciples um, about he was going to die and so on and as a sacrifice and, and Peter said, oh no, no, that will never happen to you, you know, you'll be fine. <laughs> and Jesus said, um, get thee behind me, Satan. Called Peter, one of his closest friends, Satan. Why did he call him Satan? It wasn't for something nasty. Peter was acting as that tester of the gate. The tester is called the Satan, the one who tests. It's the other aspect of the Hierophant um, who teaches. Teaching and testing, two things go together. 
Um, so, dear Peter didn't do anything wrong. He was just <laughs> testing Jesus. And Jesus said, no, I'm past, I'm past that gateway. I've gone beyond that. Um, I know what I have to do. Um, so I can't, I can't be tempted not to do it. Very important. Um, in tradition, also, the gatekeeper was uh, symbolized as Saturn, uh, which is another way of saying Satan, really. Satan. Sat Saturn. Um, and then the planet Saturn in, in the sky and so on. It represents that, crossing from the threshold, through the threshold, through the gateway from the solar system into outer space, or from outer space coming into the solar system. Because at one time, Saturn was seen as the outermost planet. So it makes a ring around the sun, and that is the threshold or gateway to come out of our solar system into the universe or, or come back come back the other way. And this role of the Hierophant, the teaching and testing, the role of the gatekeeper, and this will happen to each of us when we approach the gateway and ask permission to go in. We will be taught and we will be tested. Be taught and we'll be tested. And it's, it's very good to be alert to that. And welcome it, you know, because it's, it's, everything, everything in the universe is trying to help us. It loves us. So it's all out of love. It's trying to help us, help us to grow. Terribly important. Um, basically, this teaching and testing is associated in tradition with what's called the wisdom and the intelligence, the holy wisdom, holy intelligence, um, associated with heart and mind. Um, and it can also be described as compassion and judgment, or, or sometimes it's described as mercy and severity. And sometimes one can see um, the gatekeeper with a severe face. It's often talked about in India, for instance, this, this very severe face. And, um, you know, if you've done anything wrong, it's going to gobble everything up about you that's, that's not right about you. Arr, oh, very fierce. <laughs> um, but the other face is the merciful one, the gentle one. You know, smiling away, you know, welcome. Um, yes, we'd love you to come in. And, um, but, that, but we'll also have a teaching in it, because the great teaching of wisdom is really to do with love, isn't it? Love, love is the real wisdom. But there are so many aspects of that love, it's hard for us to learn it all in one go. Because um, the wisdom is also an active thing. It's not just sort of, oh, yes, I, I love. It's... You know, it's how to put that love into practice. And, um, and then there's so many different circumstances that we have to do that in that it's difficult to be totally loving all the time in every single circumstance and instance. But that's what we're trying to learn, and that's the wisdom um, that we eventually acquire. So you've got in the gate, gate, gatekeeper, you have this guardian, you have this hierophant, you have this teacher and tester. Terribly important, you know. It's why <laughs> you can see you can see why we've taken it as our our name, really. Lovely symbols used. I've already mentioned the gold and silver keys. The gold for the wisdom, the silver for the intelligence, or the mercy and severity. Um, another other two symbols are used in our sovereignty. It's the scepter and the orb. Scepter and the orb. Then you've got, um, if you go back to the Egyptian tradition, you've got the crook and the flail. You know, it says, says the same thing, symbols, symbols are the same thing. Um, or in the sort of um, warrior tradition, you've got the sword of truth and the mirror of reflection. But they, those two symbols in the warrior tradition. Um, Hopefully we're not going to be stuck forever more just in the warrior tradition as humanity, but get beyond it. And that, that's another thing I think is going on right now. I think the whole of humanity is at a threshold, a huge threshold, where it can step out of the focus on the warrior, which is symbolized by Mars in tradition, into the next phase, the Jupiter phase. From Mars to Jupiter. I think we're on that threshold. So... We're actually in front of a huge gatekeeper right at this moment in time, a colossal gatekeeper who is testing us and teaching us. 
And if we don't get things right, that testing can be very, very severe, as we're seeing all over the world. But we can learn, and people are learning very fast from it. That's, that's what's so fantastic. You know, it's so... Well, it certainly gives me great, great hope for the future for humanity. We are learning very, very fast and responding in much, much better ways than we would have done even 50 or 100 years ago. Um, it's quite, quite brilliant. So we're still in that gateway, but we'll get through it and um, be in this Jupiter phase, or you focus on the Jupiter, which is the goodwill, the compassion, the caring for each other, and, um, and generally... Be, uh, be ruled by the heart rather by the, than by the head and so on. I mean, we still, still need the head and whatnot. Everything we've learned and developed so far, we don't lose. We keep the best of it because that's needed. It's like making a building, you know, build it from the ground upwards. So we still need that warrior stage, what we've learned from it, all the good things that come out of it, like the courage, the steadfastness, the, the protection of each other and so on. We need that. But on top of that, now we can build this next stage based on compassion, sharing um, the wis wisdom of the heart, the wisdom of love. The next stage we're going to go into. And also the other thing associated with Jupiter, which is rather nice, is joviality, humor, <laughs> having, having fun. And um, certainly for, for me, also it's connected with, with a nice drink of wine. <laughs> but, you know, it's just, just to celebrate life. Celebrate life. Life is not all difficult. The difficulties are there just to, um, like if you want to train for Olympics as an athlete, you have to do some hard training. It's tough. But the goal is to win, well, the goal is to win the gold, isn't it? So, <laughs> and you might get it. Um, so you have to have the toughness, but you can have the celebration too on top of that, which is absolutely super. Another, another symbol of the gatekeeper is, um, in, is the old god called Janus. The Romans called uh, the gatekeeper Janus. And you oft, uh, often see pictures or statues of Janus where he has two faces, one looking to the left, one looking to the right. Occasionally you see a three-headed Janus where his face also looking to the front, left, right, front. Um, well, that, that represents the ability of the gatekeeper to look before and to look behind, look to the left, look to the right, look above and look below. Um, it's, a it's the threshold position. You're standing on the threshold. Step backwards, you can step forward, you can step left, step right. Um, you can go down to the ground or up into the air consciously, um, maybe materially sometimes. And um, that, that's the role of the gatekeeper. And you know, once we start developing and, and knowing all these things very, very deeply, each of us becomes that gatekeeper. We are that gatekeeper. We are in that position always, that threshold between heaven and earth. Sometimes that's called the mediator. We mediate between heaven and earth. We, we, and we marry those two in ourselves. Um, wonderful position to be in. We, we ourselves are those gatekeepers. Now on the pra practical side, practical side, it's important to, um, as you approach a gateway, you ask permission to go in and wait for the answer, then the gate opens. Or you, if it's a physical gate, you, you, uh, you open the gate. But as you leave, it's always right to close the gate, just like when you leave a house, you, you'd shut the door behind you. Um, so when you leave a landscape, you get to the gateway, you pause there, you say thank you, thank you very much, and see the gate closed. If the physical gate's easy to do, if it's, if it's not physical, you can do it in your mind uh, with the symbol of the cross and the circle. The cross and the circle is an archetypal symbol of any chakra, and the gateway is a chakra. So I've got to end very fast now because my time's up. But, you know, we, we, into our body, for instance, we have a gateway at, at the root of our spine, root, the root chakra, base chakra, the entrance into our body from below. We also have an entrance, a gateway in the crown chakra. 
and we can soar in our consciousness out of that crown chakra into, into other worlds. Or at death, we might leave the body through, through, that, through that gateway. So we, we have two gateways in our body. And one can see an extension of that too in terms of feet. Feet on the ground is like your, your root chakra, your base chakra. Feet on the ground. Your feet are a gateway between you and the ground, between you and the earth. A magical place where you connect with nature. And on the crown is a magical place where you connect with your higher self, your, your, your spirit, your guru, your guide, the gatekeeper above. Um, so it's oft, often you can go around feeling your, your master, your guru, standing on your head, feet on your head, but you in turn are standing on nature, making that connection and, um, and loving all. Great thing to do. I must end there. Thank you very much. <laughs>